Guys, we are more than one third of the way done of the Solo Run series, and for the month of JROs, I want to bring back some classics, the starters. Of course, this time in their fully evolved forms, and they're going to be much better, for a couple of reasons. We're going to start with Venusaur. Bulbasaur did the best of the three pre-evolved starters, and I wonder if this is going to continue, because the first thing you'll notice, other than the stats being a lot better, is that the movesets are not identical. Pokemon that are evolved learn moves later, but tend to learn more moves. Unfortunately, Venusaur doesn't actually get more moves, but it does start with Vine Whip, which is going to make Brock a heck of a lot faster and easier, and means that we can actually get through the first part of the game at minimum battles. We're actually going to be at minimum battles all the way to the SSN, and yeah, we're going to be absolutely speeding through the first part of the game. So. Let's just take a look at Brock. Bye, Brock. That was really quick. And I think Misty might be just as easy since we are a grass Pokemon with a grass move. Wish we had Razor Leaf, but it shouldn't be a problem. Staryu does outspeed, but it has to go for Tackle. We hit, we don't knock it out with Vine Whip, but X Defend, we have taken all of 4 HP of damage. We level up. X Defend, that doesn't matter. Tackle, doesn't matter. Another tackle crits, but then we crit, so it might have taken another hit. But I think it's pretty safe to say it didn't really matter. We were going to win anyways, and we can just move on to Rival 2, who thankfully doesn't have any flying moves. Otherwise, he could be a little more difficult. Pidgeotto goes for quick attack. We hit with tackle. Neither does a lot of damage. Another quick attack, another tackle. But then we outspeed, and thankfully, Sand Attack misses. But after another tackle, Sand Attack does hit. Of course, the very next turn we miss, Pidgeotto hits us with Gust. We then miss again, another Gust, but we are able to knock out Pidgeotto and make it to Abra. We might miss against Abra, but it doesn't really matter. We just need to hit against Rattata and Charmander, and we should be just fine. So, now that we've knocked out Abra, here comes Rattata. I go for Vine Whip. Crit, that may have mattered. We miss with Tackle, it hits with Leer. We miss with Tackle, it misses with Growl. We miss with Tackle again, it hits with Scratch. Finally, we hit with Tackle and it goes for Ember, but thankfully we don't miss again. That was close, could have resulted in a loss, but so far, we are a perfect 3 for 3 in Major Battles. And there's really nothing to say about Nugget Bridge or Roots 24 and 25. So we are going to move on to the SSN, where I'm not going to skip Body Slam. I've done that in the past. It is silly. The extra few seconds it takes to get Body Slam, well worth it, since we no longer have to use Tackle. Heck, it's even better than Vine Whip a lot of the time. Now we can take on Rival 3, and this should go a lot easier. Pidgeotto hits with Quick Attack. We crit with Body Slam, one down. Raticate hits. We don't even need the crit to knock it out. We outspeed Kadabra? Didn't expect that. We knock it out in one hit. And then Charmeleon does go for Ember. It only does 17 damage. And while we did lose half our HP, we had a very easy victory against Rival 3. That wasn't intended to rhyme. And I don't think the good times are going to stop. Lieutenant Surge, he's not usually very good, and his moves are resisted by Venusaur. I think it's another easy victory in store. All right, that one was intentional. Let's just go to the battle. We actually outspeed Voltorb, but we don't one-shot with Body Slam. Goes for an X speed, and then Voltorb outspeeds. Sonic Boom is the best move it could have used, but we still knock it out with Vine Whip. That's one down. We'll outspeed Pikachu in one shot. That's two down. Raichu goes for Growl, so we're not doing that much, but look how little a critical hit Thundershock did. I mean, a critical hit Thunderbolt may have done just 15. Yeah, this was never going to be tricky. And we can move on. This run is absolutely speeding on by. Will Venusaur not only be the best starter, but maybe one of the best Pokemon we've ever done? It's looking that way, but there is a lot of game to go. And we're going to head through Rock Tunnel to Celadon. Normally here, I'd go battle the Rocket Hideout, but I think we can battle Erika right now. Might as well. The biggest reason is we get Mega Drain, which is slightly more powerful than Vine Whip. 
and it gives us HP back, so it's just overall a much better move. Now, this is a little earlier than I usually battle Erica, but it should be fine. We go for Body Slam, and I was pretty sure Victory Bell would go for Poison Powder. Gen 1 AI at its worst. I'll explain that in just a second, but we're easily going to knock out Victory Bell. It doesn't even attack, so it only got one attack. Tangela has really good defense, so I'm going to go for Razor Leaf, which will always crit. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, why aren't you just going to use Razor Leaf going forward? Don't worry, I'll explain that. But let me just knock out Vile Plume, which also has to go for Poison Powder. And I guess as we walk to the Rocket Hideout, I need to explain a couple things to you guys. First off, why not use Razor Leaf? Well, the reason for that is complicated. And it relates to the fact that Generation 1 doesn't really count boosts. Not the badge boost glitch if you've watched my videos before, just regular boosts the same way other generations do. This is a little oversimplified, but roughly, if you use Swords Dance and then get critical hit with something like Karate Chop, it's gonna do about four times damage. Actually, in modern Pokemon, it would do three times damage, but you get my point. They stack on top of one another. You multiply two by two or two by 1.5, and there you go. Not in generation one. If you get a critical hit, it doesn't just ignore if the opponent used something like Harden, which it should, it ignores your Swords Dancer, in this case, our Growth. We're going to get the move Growth very soon, and it's going to be one of the most powerful moves we can use. It raises Special by one stage, but Special is both offensive and defensive, and due to the Badge Boost glitch, it's also going to slightly raise our other stats by 12.5%, depending on which badges we have. And for that reason, we want to get Mega Drain as soon as we possibly can, and we're actually not going to use Razor Leaf, despite the fact it's effectively a base 110 power move. For now, as you can see, it's working just fine. The other question is, why did Vileplume use Poison Powder? Why did Victory Bell? Because in Generation 1, Pokemon are only seen as Monotype. So, Venusaur is seen as a Grass type. Grass is weak to Poison. Poison Powder is a Poison type. So a lot of bad programming going on. Poison Powder obviously isn't an attacking move. It's not even super effective against Venusaur, but because of how simple Generation 1 is, that's how quote-unquote good AI works, and it's something we actually will exploit later in the run, much later in the run, and I'll talk about that then, but now let's go battle Giovanni. Man, I talked through the entire Rocket Hideout, not bad. Anyway, we still have Razor Leaf. We're gonna use it. We're gonna one-shot. That's one down. Next comes out Rhyhorn. We're gonna use it. We're gonna one-shot. Two down. And even though Kangaskhan isn't weak to Razor Leaf, we're also going to one-shot it, and that is a very easy battle. Speaking of which, after we do some shopping, we're going to go battle Rival 4, who also should be very easy. Alright, so we're going to lead with Razor Leaf, and it doesn't quite one-shot Pidgeotto, but it goes for Whirlwind. Next comes out Execute, and we also don't one-shot, which is unfortunate because it's going to put us to sleep. Thankfully, it goes for Barrage. We wake up fairly quickly and we knock it out without too many problems. Next comes out the Gyarados. We are gonna one-shot that with Razor Leaf. And now Charmeleon, not quite with Body Slam, but it doesn't do much to us. And like I predicted, another easy battle. But the next battle might be a little bit more difficult. Ghastly resists Razor Leaf, and it has decent special, and, oh, well, I don't know why, I thought for a second that Ghost resists Grass. Ghost resists Poison. It was only single resisting, and that's why I was so worried about this. But that went better than I thought it would. We almost one-shot. Not bad at all. And after making our way through the Pokemon Tower, I have to decide whether I'm going to go battle Koga or Rival Fival. Rival Fival makes a bit of sense, because we might get to level 43, and that would give us growth. But I'm going to try Koga with Razor Leaf and see if the critical hits Plus the fact that they have really low special, I might be okay. Let's see. All right, so we're doing about half to coughing number one. We crit every single time. Smog misses, so that's one down, not bad. Muck, on the other hand, only doing about a quarter, and Sludge does some pretty decent damage. Ignore, not very effective, it's just doing regular damage. A second Razor Leaf, yeah, it's gonna be a four KO, and that confirms it. We do survive on 14 HP, now 17, but Although, maybe we can knock out the second coughing, which we do, that's pretty good. We're not going to be able to knock out the wheezing, so that really sucks. We're going to have to go do Rival Fievel. Alright, so we go for Razor Leaf, it's going to do about a quarter. Smog, one more hit, we lose. Well, 
Here's Razor Leaf and oh, Smog can miss. Okay. So yeah, there's the four KO and are you kidding me? <laughs> smog instead of self-destruct or anything else. Miss with Smog, toxic. I can't believe that just happened. I can't believe that just happened. That's that's incredible. In fact, I think Koga has good AI, so he can't use self-destruct here. That was that was so silly. I'm gonna keep it because it doesn't really matter. But if I were to do this run again, it might make more sense to go to Sylph Company first, which is where we're about to go right now. And that would give us probably a better chance of three-shotting either Muck or Weezing, and probably not level 43, but at least a lot closer. All right, so we can skip ahead to Rival Fievel, leads with Pidgeot. We're at level 40. We use Body Slam. It's doing just under half. It goes for Wing Attack, another Body Slam, another Wing Attack, and we're going to make it to Execute with 78 HP. So we hit Execute with Body Slam. It goes for Reflect, which is a Psychic move. Reflect only affects one Pokemon, but it's permanent. We're... Oh! We actually don't knock out Execute, but thankfully it no longer knows Hypnosis. It'll learn it back when it becomes an Executor, which doesn't make any sense. But it goes for Reflect again, because Reflect is a Psychic move. Gen 1 AI is the best. Next comes out Gyarados. We go for Razor Leaf. It does about half. Bite does 17 damage. 61 HP to Alakazam. There's Confusion. We just survive on a sliver of HP. Will we knock it out? No, and we also don't get the Paralysis. And to be frank, it wouldn't really matter their Psybeam. We weren't going to make it past Charizard anyway. So what are we going to do here? You might think, oh, let's use our rare candies, but instead, oh, I didn't mean to dig, but that's okay. We're going to make our way back into Sylph Company, and we're going to head to the seventh floor. We don't have to fight any extra trainers, and we're going to get TM3, Swords Dance. This is a very good move, and it's going to combine well with Body Slam, and I didn't think I needed it for Rival Fievel, but obviously I do, and I think it will make Rival Fievel absolutely a joke. But there's only one way to find out, right? I'm going to go for Swords Dance. Pidgeot goes for Wing Attack and gets a crit. I go for a second Swords Dance, another Wing Attack. It's time to attack. We knock out Pidgeot at 53 HP. We knock out Execute at 53 HP. We're going to outspeed and knock out Gyarados. And now it all comes down to we outspeed Alakazam, but we level up. So we may not outspeed Charizard. Okay, we do, and we... Oh, gosh, there's the crit I don't need. Thankfully, Charizard just knows Ember. That's really lucky. You know what? I'll take it. We got unlucky. We got lucky, I guess, that Charizard doesn't learn Flamethrower until an unreasonably late level. That's going to really suck, by the way, when we eventually use Charizard. Of course, I'm going to use all three of the final evolutions, see what's the best. But... Swords Dance helped out tremendously. Very glad I got it. And as you saw, I even used it against Giovanni number two. Not that I needed to. This battle was unbelievably easy. But after it, we have a bit of a tough choice. To our north, well, just north, is a Psychic Gym. We're weak to that. To the south, a Fire Gym. We're weak to that. Which gym shall I take? It's Psychic. Psychic gonna be beating Psychic. Looking forward to the League End. League End. Psychic. All right, I'm done. Uh, let's go battle Sabrina. Now, we did actually outspeed Kadabra, so Swords Dance may not have been a good play there. Psybeam, uh, it confuses me. And I get myself in confusion. And I get hit by Psychic. Okay, that was pretty bad, and I forgot to save in front of Sabrina, so we have to make it back to her. But I have a pretty good idea of what we're gonna do, because Mr. Mime is very easy to set up against. So I'm going to use Body Slam, knock out Kadabra. We're going to level up. There's Growth. Going to delete Leech Seed. Haven't used that in a while. That's good. I'm going to use Razor Leaf accidentally. I meant to use Swords Dance, and Mr. Mime went for Barrier. Barrier, Light Screen. We should one-shot and outspeed everything. We obviously outspeed and one-shot Venomoth, and here's the moment of truth. We outspeed, and we're obviously going to one-shot, even if we got a crit. So, yeah, Badge Boost Glitch. Really useful in Generation 1. With that said, without Koga's badge, we don't get a speed boost, which would have hurt us against Rival Fievel. So remember how I said maybe we should have battled Koga second? Well, in reality, the safest strat, although the most time-intensive, would be to go to Sylph Company, 
get Swords Dance, use Swords Dance to set up against the first coughing and defeat Koga, then come back to Self Company. Probably would cost me about 2-3 minutes, but that is definitely the safest strategy going forward. Not that I really make these into consistent speedruns, but in case you wanted to, that's what you should do. Anyway, now we don't have a choice. We have to go defeat Blaine, and Blaine could be kinda tough. However, his first Growlithe not only is just a Growlithe, but it only knows Ember. And I could set up growth. You know what? Why am I talking about this? Let's just show the battle. I outspeed and go for Swords Dance. I haven't taught Mega Drain yet. There's a reason for that. Growlithe goes for Ember. It does 22 damage. I'm just going to go for Body Slam. Critical, it doesn't matter. That's one down. We outspeed and one-shot Ponyta. That's two down. We outspeed. Don't one-shot Rapid Ash, but Retroactive Super Potion. And that means we're going to outspeed. Oh, we don't one-shot Arcanine. Fire Blast. Oh, we... S no. Well, that sucks. Maybe if we get a crit, that sucks. And now it uses Ember. We shouldn't have lost that. But there's a really easy way around this. We could just set up two Swords Dance, and then we'll just one-shot our canine. And so, since you already know what I'm going to do, rather than narrate the battle, I'll explain why I haven't used Growth in Mega Drain yet. Essentially, having a base 110 power move is very, very powerful. And for most average battles, you don't need Growth and Razor Leaf. In fact, we haven't even needed it for major battles yet. And the best way to do these runs, whether they're solo runs, impossible challenges, anything, is to save your TMs till the last possible second. The more options you have in the harder late game, the better. And so I've learned that as I've been doing these challenges for years. The worst thing you can do is teach a move too early and be like, oh, if only I had Razor Leaf, I don't have time to set up growth, but Razor Leaf would have been great, or I keep running out of power points. It's just the smart thing to do, and if we really need it, I'll teach it, but I don't think we're going to need it until the Elite Four. And speaking of the Elite Four, there are only two major battles left. Well, really just one. Giovanni, I guess technically is a major battle, but it's not going to be a difficult battle. I'm just going to use Razor Leaf against Rhyhorn, that's one down. Doug Trio outspeed, Slash will always crit, but doesn't do a lot. Two down. Gonna go for Razor Leaf, doesn't one shot, Poison Sting crits, not a big deal. There goes Nido Queen, Nido King, Razor Leaf still doesn't one shot, Poison Sting still doesn't do a lot of damage, and we will easily outspeed, one shot, crit, absolutely obliterate Giovanni's team. I wasn't really worried about this, and frankly, I'm not all that worried about Rival 6. Maybe we'll need to use Growth and Mega Drain here, but I'm not sure yet. As always, leads with Pidgeot. I go for Swords Dance, it goes for Agility, one and two chance. Then it goes for Wing Attack, I go for a second Swords Dance. It goes for Wing Attack as I set up the third Swords Dance. And thankfully it goes for Agility, so we're at just under 100 HP. Hopefully this will work. Of course we level up, so we might not outspeed Alakazam, but we'll worry about that in a second. Razor Leaf will one-shot Rhyhorn. Body Slam will one-shot Execute. Body Slam, oh. An ill-timed critical hit allows Gyarados to use Leer. In fact, I would have liked if Leer actually hit, because it would have boosted my speed. We knock it out. Moment of truth. Yeah, Alakazam outspeeds. All right, well, oh, we survive. That's, that's good. Unexpected, actually. And we knock it out. I think we won. As long as we don't get a critical hit against Charizard, we win. All right. Oh, never mind. Charizard outspeeds us. I'm not sure. I guess in the past we were kind of overleveled. I thought we would outspeed. We've been outspeeding pretty consistently. That's okay. We'll just try again. All right. So you know what's going to happen. Hopefully we get two agilities again. Actually, this time I just decide to go for body slam. So I could outspeed the Alakazam. That's pretty good. And I'll set up the sword dance against Rhyhorn. But it was at this moment that I realized something. And I'm pretty much just going to give up on this battle. What did I realize? Well, if you remember the last battle, I actually leveled up twice. Once after Pidgeot, but again after Alakazam. And the Charizard hit me with Flamethrower, which can't miss, in theory, and one-shot me, although I was at very low HP. It probably would do a lot of damage even if I had over half my HP. So why am I trying to use Swords Dance strats when there's a really obvious solution here? Uh, this time, Alakazam, by the way, goes for Psychic, which it should have gone for last time. We wouldn't even have made it to Charizard, and this strategy will nullify all of that. Alright, like last time against Pidgeot, 
I'm not going to really set anything up. I get a lucky critical hit, which is pretty nice. And I get two agility, so I have a lot of HP. But now I'm just going to use growth. Why not? We're going to set up all six. While I won't outspeed Charizard, by raising my special, neither Psychic nor Flamethrower should do all that much to me, and we should win. Now comes out Execute. I go for Body Slam. It's not going to one-shot. The crit probably helped me. But Execute will go for Poison Powder because I'm a Grass-type, so we can knock it out. Next comes out Gyarados. I go for Body Slam. It goes for Bite, but it does, like, nothing to me. And we knock it out with a second Body Slam. I should have gone for Mega Drain and gotten my health back. That might hurt me versus Alakazam. We outspeed, but we don't one-shot, which is unfortunate. We probably should have used more growths. But what can you do? Thankfully, Alakazam goes for Reflect. And now we should be fine against Charizard. Charizard goes for Flamethrower. I go for... Wow, that did nothing. Why didn't I set up Swords Dance as well? This is such an easy solution. I might still win. We paralyze it. Yeah, we're gonna win. No! I don't know why I'm making this so complicated. You know what? This is what happens when a run takes you like a third the normal time. You just get too confident. Let's just win now. All right, so you know what's gonna happen against Pidgeot. I actually set up one Swords Dance, because why not? Not only will this boost our defense a little bit, which is good, but it also allows us to outspeed Pidgeot. We cannot paralyze it because it's a normal type and Gen 1 is weird, but we knock it out with just around 100 HP. This shouldn't matter. Now against Rhyhorn, we're gonna use one Growth, Stomp, two Growth, Critical Hit, Stomp, Swords Dance, Tail Whip, another Swords Dance, Horn Drill, Miss, uh, Mega Drain, we should be fine. All right, 109 HP, Body Slam, Knockout Execute, Mega Drain, half, Gyarados goes for Dragon Rage, another Mega Drain, we're at almost full HP, Alakazam, we outspeed, we one-shot, we level up, Charizard outspeeds, Flamethrower, that's fine. There we go, that was easy. I mean, it sucks that we could have lost to another crit, but that was me making things a little bit more complicated than they needed to be, and in my excitement, I actually overrun the ledge. By the way, I never bring this up. It's one of the most annoying things. I play the game at increased speed to get more runs out, but that one ledge, I cannot tell you how many times I have a good battle against Rival 6 and miss the ledge. It's like the real semi-final boss. Like, keeping it real, that ledge is infinitely a harder boss than Bruno. <laughs> I mean, really, really is. Anyway, speaking of Bruno, I don't really have much to say. The growth strat should work well against Dugong, which will probably go for rest at some point. We should sweep. Now, in Generation 3, we would have Earthquake, but of course, in Generation 3, the Ghost Pokemon have Levitate, so it wouldn't actually matter. But my point being that we're going to struggle a bit against Agatha, but that's the only trainer that could give us any problems, and I have a bit of a trick up my sleeve. So let's just get right to it and battle the Elite Four. Now, you might notice we're at level 60, we used all our rare candies, and you might notice we have Sleep Powder. That's the trick I have up my sleeve. So, I'm just gonna use two Growth, and I think we can sweep, knock out Dugong, knock out Cloyster, knock out Slowbro. Jinx is a bit of a question mark, but we got a nice critical hit that may have mattered there, and all right, I think that's good. Oh, we don't knock out Lapras, all right, that's fine. We used... Are you kidding me? So, if I beat the Elite Four this next time, it doesn't count as a first try victory because of that crit. This could maybe be the only time I lose the Elite Four because I didn't set up one extra growth and Lapras crit. I, I hope I lose again. I hope Agatha beats me this time. That's, that's really annoying. All right, let's try again. All right, so like before, we outspeed, we put Dugong to sleep. One growth, it's asleep. Two growth, it's asleep. Three growth, it's asleep. Four growth, it wakes up, we're fine. All right, Mega Drain, Mega Drain. This may shock you, but against Slowbro, another Mega Drain. Against Jinx, Body Slam, Critical Hit again. I don't know how much you would do otherwise, but this time, we one-shot Lapras. So that's pretty easy, and speaking of pretty easy, I mean, we don't talk about Bruno in terms of difficulty. I've already made that joke before, sorry. I haven't even watched that movie. Anyway, let's just talk about the battle. So, I don't need to put Onyx to sleep. I'm just gonna use Growth to... Onyx hasn't attacked yet. Third turn, it uses Harden. I'm gonna go for Mega Drain. I level up, 
I decide to use Mega Drain because Hitmonchan can use Counter, and we knock it out. That's pretty good. We're also going to one-shot Hitmonlee, although the crit may have mattered. I don't think it did. Uh, it's probably doing the same. We one-shot Onyx. Now all that's left is Machamp. And we don't quite one-shot, but Focus Energy. Knock Bruno out with a Body Slam. And now we get to the Agatha Lottery. So what is my secret strategy? I mean, you kind of have already seen it. Once I find an Elixir, I'm just going to try and put all her Pokemon to sleep. You know, her strategy. But my move is 75 accurate. So all I need to do is outspeed, and we should be good. Gengar's asleep. All right, one growth. Gengar stays asleep. Two, stays asleep. Three, stays asleep. Four, stays asleep. Five, stays asleep. Six, it just wakes up. I put it to sleep. It wakes up again. Let's put it back to sleep. No, this time it misses, but it goes for Dream Eater. Seriously, I'd like to put it to sleep just in case. Okay, no, come on. Oh, it misses too. Come on. All right, surely it's not going to miss three times in a row. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Oh my gosh, another Dream Eater. I should have just attacked. Okay, this time it's asleep. I don't think that was smart. Whatever. I'm going to use Mega Drain and <laughs> it's doing half. Oh my gosh. So if you remember Bulbasaur, we are doing nothing close to that. Oh my gosh. Well, whatever. It swaps into Golbat. I go for Body Slam. Hopefully this will one shot. Not quite. And Supersonic hits. Of course it does. I really don't want to see Haze. I almost would rather hit myself in Confusion here. Alright, well, I get my wish. I hit myself in Confusion. Super Potion is fine. Love that. Confused no more. Love that even more. Knockout Golbat. One down. Finally. Alright, so Gengar with half HP. We should just knock it out. We do. Two down. Now, I'm not going to make the same mistake as last time. I'm going to use Mega Drain. No. All right. Well, now do you see why I want to put the Pokemon to sleep? When I don't do it, I get Hypnosis. When I do do it, I get some crazy good luck, to be fair. Anyway, well, we got our loss. Unless... <laughs> and it used Dream Eater. What is going on? All right. We're going to knock out Haunter. That's three down. We level up, so Body Slam's not going to do as much to Arbok. Thankfully, it doesn't go for Glare, it goes for Bite. And we knock it out in two hits, and now we just don't want to see Confuse Ray against Gengar number two. We should be fine. It actually outspeeds and goes for Dream Eater. We are doing about a third. It goes for Dream Eater again. We are still doing about a third. Well, more than that, but it's going to be a three at KO. And Toxic. That was anything but, Agatha. That was very kind. We win first try and lance will be a joke remember i talked about good ai being really bad later in the game it's lance three of lance's five pokemon including dragonite no non-damaging psychic moves so anytime we're going to use a fighting type or a poison type like venusaur as long as we get past gyarados and aerodactyl lance can't do anything to us so yeah, maybe we're just about to make it to the champion. Let's see. To be safe, I'm going to use Sleep Powder and it hits. That's good and Gyarados stays asleep. That's very good. I'm going to set up Growth. Gyarados stays asleep. Another Growth. Gyarados stays asleep. I'm doing this to outspeed Aerodactyl. A third Growth. Gyarados wakes up. We should one-shot with Mega Drain, hopefully. I'm just going to go for it. No. Although, that is a good indicator we need to set up a few more growths. That's about equivalent of two growths. Thereabouts. The math's a little different. But, yeah, that sucks. Thankfully, Gyarados went for Leer. That's pretty good. In fact, I'm pretty confident I'm going to set up another growth here. And Gyarados goes for Dragon Rage. That's fine. I'm going to set up a fifth growth. Gyarados goes for Leer. And you know what? Let's set up a sixth. It's not really... Oh, no. Why? Oh. All right, well, that was... I played this about as badly as you could, and I'm still going to win. We knocked out Gyarados, 83 HP. We can use Mega Drain on Dragonair, which is almost going to knock it out. But more importantly, we're going to gain all our HP back, pretty much. And as long as we don't level up after Dragonair number two, which we don't, where we won. <clears throat> we outspeed Aerodactyl, and that's what I wanted to do. Although, the much smarter play was to just knock out the Gyarados, which was a threat and set up against the Dragonair, which, as we discussed, was not a threat. So, again, playing really dangerously for no reason. I mean, I did say I wanted to lose, but 
but that was a bit facetious. I'm trying a little bit too hard to turn that into reality. But one thing I might not have to try as hard with is to lose to the champion. I mean, Rival 6, maybe it was my fault, but was a little difficult. We probably will level up in the middle of the battle. Charizard has some good fire attacks. This could be pretty tricky. But unlike last time, there's no new strategy. These are the moves we have. Hopefully, it's all we need. Let's go. All right, like with Lance, let's put Pidgeot to sleep. Very good, and it stays asleep. That's a good start. I'm going to use one growth, and it stays asleep. Two growths, stays asleep. Three growths, stays asleep. Four growths, stays asleep. Five growths, stays asleep. Oh my gosh, again, six growths, and I'm going to put it back to sleep. <laughs> oh gosh, this could not have gone better. And the reason I put it back to sleep is that I don't know if Body Slam's gonna one-shot. Well, not with the crit, it doesn't. But Pidgeot stays asleep, and we're at full HP, max special, heading to Alakazam. We easily shoot out speed, and we one-shot. That is two down. Right on, I mean, Mega Train would one-shot no matter what. Three down. Executor, I go for Body Slam. It does about half, but no, it puts me to sleep. This could be bad. Turn one, I'm asleep, it goes for stomp, all right. Turn two, still asleep, goes for stomp again, okay. Turn three, I'm still asleep, and it goes for barrage. Wow, that's doing more than it's a critical hit. That means every single hit, thankfully only three. Could you imagine that was five? Worst case scenario, and we're still snoozing. Oh gosh, it's going for barrage. This time, no critical hit. You can see they're only doing four damage. I'm still asleep, another barrage, thankfully no crit. I mean, you can see in action how powerful badge boosts are. Look how much less barrage is doing here. I'm still asleep, it goes for stomp. I'm now at half HP, actually just under half HP. Finally, I wake up, another stomp, 87 HP. It's at half health, we have max special. I'm gonna go for Mega Drain and oh my, I can't. We just lost, it's gonna, oh, it missed. We got a crit. We should have just knocked it out. I don't know. Okay. I got some HP back. Wasn't worth it. I mean, I could tell I was going to level up, but we still should outspeed Gyarados and one shot with Mega Drain. Oh, you know what? I feel less bad. Thankfully, it went for Leer, but if it went for Hyper Beam, I mean, that HP may have been the difference. So good play. Just bad luck with the crit. All right. Only one more Pokemon left. And of course, it's the scariest one. If it gets a critical hit, we lose. All right, what's it? Oh, I outspeed this time. Okay. Well, we don't do very much. It goes for Fire Blast. No crit. But it burned us. That just halved our attack. I don't even know what to do if it's going to do more than Mega Drain. Oh, my God. I I'll see how much it does. <laughs> okay. I think we just won if it doesn't crit here. It goes for Fire Blast. Oh, get out of here. All right. Wow. I, I have no words for this run. What an absolute mess. The perfect way to kick off the month of Jero's. Oh my gosh. All right. So I got more videos to make. In the end, speaking of Jero's 11, we have a multiple of 11, a 333 time. And Venusaur's level isn't bad. Having said that, based on the time it took to complete and how easy it was, clearly it belongs in the B tier. But other than Snorlax that had to use normal moves for Brock and needed to level up, Venusaur has the second worst time. It still definitely belongs in this tier, but right at the bottom. It's at a higher level than Dragonite, Tauros, etc. But I can't discount the fact it took significantly shorter, both in real and in game time. So for that reason, it's going to find itself in the top tier. Will Charizard and Blastoise join it or will they surpass it? Remember, Bulbasaur was the best pre-evolved starter, but with these fully evolved starters, things are going to be a little bit different. Only one way to find out. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another new video. Take care.